Yo yo everybody! So a lot of us have a special connection with Cartoon Network. Whether it was the channel that created your favorite show of all time, or it was the channel that literally introduced you to the medium of animation. The CN has created countless treasurable memories for kids across the world, which is why the current state of the channel hits as hard as it does. It's bad. And when I say that, I mean it. I'm not a very reactionary person. I'm of the opinion that it's best to wait and see. You know, be patient when it comes to evaluating such a big situation. But the pessimism surrounding the channel has been around for years, over half a decade at this point. And while a lot of that is fueled by blind nostalgia and people that don't know what they're talking about, it's been so long that I argue it's valid to be disappointed at the current state of the network. So I want to do my research and talk about it. What happened? What are they doing now that is much worse than before? Is there hope on the horizon? Or more sadness on this sunset? And it actually stems from that. What shows do they have now, and what's coming in the near future? So yeah, let's first take a look at their programming. The channel currently has five ongoing programs. And if that seems like a low number, it's because it is, but I'll get to that later. So first we got Teen Titans Go. It's been the face of CN for a while, with its infamous on-air percentage from a few years ago. Love it or hate it, it's brought on massive success as its own program. The show's currently airing its 8th season, and with all the movies and crossovers and specials, I suspect it'll continue to air after that, regardless of any hate campaigns happening. <laughs> Anyway, next up we have Craig of the Creek. This is your wholesome, slice of life type program that is always good to have on your network. Its themes and general style are great to use for representing your company in business exec meetings and everything, and I've always just thought it's felt fresh. It's successful too. The show's currently on its fifth season with a movie and a spin-off coming? Oh. Well, honestly, you know, five seasons is a good run, especially for that genre of show. Maybe this will be like some people's Clarence, a nostalgic, endearing, simple family type show that everyone can get behind when reminiscing about the old days. Next we have Looney Tunes Cartoons, which is, let's see here, I believe the 7,000th Looney Tunes iteration? You know, I'm fine with Looney Tunes, I actually grew up on a couple of their shows and they were fine, but I never see anyone my age or under praise the franchise. No one's ever recommending people to watch it. No one's arguing what peak Looney Tunes is on the street. Apparently most of the show hasn't even been on the network. Most of the episodes have just been streamed on HBO Max. But okay, another Looney Tunes project. It's in their second season. C cool, whatever. Summer Camp Island. You mean total drama island. Oh. I will be honest. I don't think I've ever heard about this show in my life. Which is crazy, because I have so many friends that also enjoy animation and give me recommendations, old and new. Maybe the show is brand new? Five seasons? This show has to be a product of bad advertising. Actually, you know what, I think I may have seen a couple of commercials and bumpers on this show while watching the network, but that's about it. And once again, the majority of the seasons weren't even on the network, they were just tossed aside to HBO Max instead. The show is coming back for its final season on the actual channel, so I do root for it to go out with a bang. But yikes, you have two shows in their final seasons. Out of your five? That's concerning. Last up we have Wee Baby Bears. And you know what? It's fun. I know it's a trendy thing to just hate all the baby and kiddified spinoffs, and yeah, I don't enjoy most of those shows. But out of all of the ones I've seen at least, this is probably the best? It's not a very high bar, I know, and it's definitely not my favorite new show or anything. But the style is really nice, the writing's snappy. It, it could be worse. It, it, it could definitely be worse. <laughs> so overall, we have five programs, two of which are ending soon, two of which have had the majority of their show not even on the channel, and all five, I would argue, are for elementary school kids or under. Some of these shows occasionally tackle some mature themes, I know, but the network has had way more mature shows in the past for teens and young adults. I'm not sure why there isn't at least one show in their current lineup, one show, that could satisfy that broad demographic. In comparison to when I was watching, regularly at least, this schedule is especially sparse. Not only do they just not have many current programs, but they also haven't been creating many of them for the channel either. 
You know what, just to seem unbiased, let's take a look at their past year, starting in the 2010s, in comparison to now. In just 2010, they released Adventure Time, Ben 10 Ultimate Alien, Mad, Regular Show, Young Justice, and Generator Rex. All of these shows got at least three seasons, so they were very successful for the channel. And I'm not even mentioning shows that didn't go on to air as many seasons, like Hero 108, Sidekick, Symbionic Titan, or Scooby-Doo Mystery Inc. All of these shows first aired in 2010. But that might sound like cherry picking, so let's move forward. 2011 had DC Nation Shorts, Amazing World of Gumball, and Ninjago. They also had some misses that year. But getting giants like Ninjago, a show that went on to have at least 15 seasons in Gumball, one of the faces of the entire channel, is very impressive. 2012, they had Ben 10 Omniverse, Annoying Orange, DreamWorks Dragons. 2013 was the year of Teen Titans Go, Uncle Grandpa, and Steven Universe. So let's take a look at 2020. Here are the shows made for that year. Thundercats Roar which was raked over the coals and has already been cancelled. Moving on. Well, that's it. That's the only new show for the year. In 2021, we have Elliot from Earth, a well-reviewed show, but it's already been cancelled. On a cliffhanger, I might add. That's the only new show from 2021. This year, 2022, they've created Wee Baby Bears. Not everyone's thing, okay. But for the third year in a row, they've made one new show for the network. If you want to blame this on the pandemic, I guess go for it, but three new shows for the last three years is not just a little bit less production. It's so vastly different in comparison. Plus, Nickelodeon, Disney, and Netflix have all had more new programming than the CN. So from that perspective, I understand why people aren't tuning in as much. There's hardly any new blood in the programming to excite viewers. And not to mention, a ton of CN's old shows are now on different channels. I remember watching Beyblade and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! on the network. Beyblade and Pokemon especially. Those two really hooked me into the world of Cartoon Network. Seeing the advertisements for other shows as I watched them really helped introduce me to the channel. Now these IPs all have new homes. Instead of airing new episodes of these shows on weekend mornings, you can now watch reruns of Amazing World of Gumball, a beloved show but it's been on for over a decade and hasn't had a new episode in three years. <laughs> I can't help but think that stinks a bit. There's literally no new programming through the week. Actually, as I'm speaking, there's literally no new programming whatsoever. All the five current shows aren't airing new episodes. This is why we need a consistent stream of new programs to give viewers a reason to tune in. Another thing is Cartonito. Introduced to the US in 2021, Cartonito is a programming block specifically aimed for preschoolers. They say it's family programming, but I don't know what jargon that is. Even though he's family, I'm not going to make my 22-year-old brother watch Coco Melon. It's basically like Nick Jr., but instead of a whole channel, it's a four-hour slot on Cartoon Network instead. There are shows like a rendition of Thomas the Train, Lucas the Spider from YouTube, a crossover between Sesame Street and Mex? Honestly, if I were a little kid, this lineup would absolutely slap. I think they did a great job with it. My problem doesn't stem from its programming though. It's the broadcasting hours. It airs from 7am to 11am on weekdays. I don't know about you guys, but I sure know I have a ton of memories watching some cartoons before I go to school. You know, a 30 minute to an hour session while I get some breakfast before being faced with 7 miserable hours of my young life. That's the jam. And I guess in this day and age, kids are just going to a streaming service and picking their favorite cartoon from there. If anything, I would just change the hours a bit. Uh, apparently it used to run even longer from 6am to 2pm. What the hell were you thinking? Well, at least they've seen the errors of their way now, which they definitely haven't done with HBO Max. If you didn't already know, HBO Max is the streaming service a lot of current Cartoon Network shows go to, as well as the older ones like Dexter's Lab and Ed Ed and Eddie. A ton of people, including myself, look at this streaming service as the future of the network. Cable isn't going to be around in a significant way for too much longer, so it's smart for them to plan ahead. 
Not only is watching on demand so popular now, but by also including a live TV model within the service, it'll be as if nothing ever changed. I mean, services like Hulu and Paramount Plus already have this feature. That's how many of the major channels seem to be preparing anyway. However, just a few months ago, a ton of shows on HBO were cancelled. More than 30 shows, over 20 of which were animation, were dropped from the platform. You know, just, just, just dropped, without warning the creators. Why were these shows dropped, you may be asking? Well, Warner Bros. Discovery is looking to reduce their $53 billion in debt. $50 billion. There's gotta be a limit, right? Like, what's the line to get your company shut down? Well, thank God they removed Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures from HBO Max. So, you've now got creators untrusting of business plans coming from the parent company. You've got financial issues leading to cutting costs by canceling and removing shows, not to mention laying off employees. And again, earlier in August, they legitimately only had enough money to distribute three movies since they didn't have enough cash to fund advertising. The CEO of the company, David Zaslav, goes on to defend this decision by stating, We did not get rid of any show that was helping us. Jesus Christ. If I were trying to pitch a program, as of right now, the CN might be the last place I'd go to, even though it's the channel I'm the biggest fan of and has incredible history. The parent company is in financial disarray, it seems like, and I would genuinely be hesitant of letting that project be in their hands. Say what you want about other networks, but Nickelodeon has a wide array of ongoing shows. Disney has very successful programs. Netflix has a cavalcade of animation. Though communication is just so incredibly important. It builds up trust, it builds up reliability. Like with the Total Drama reboot, staff doesn't even know when it's gonna air. With writers saying, we find out when you do. Well that stinks, they don't know? That must be such an odd feeling. You're working for years on a project, and you're waiting on cold feet for the channel to announce the release window through a Twitter drop or something. I am optimistic though. In June, the channel announced they were going to be producing more young adult and adult-oriented content. Sure, that was before the whole HBO Max debacle happened, but I'm hopeful they'll stick with that promise. They're in desperate need of some new content to replace the shows going out, and if they can fill the gap in with at least two to three more mature programs, I'm on board. And, and you know, looking at their upcoming programs, there's some excitement to be had. I'm already one of the biggest Total Drama fans on the planet, so the revival is exciting. Every time official news for the show comes out, it gets on trending, weirdly enough, so there's some real buzz surrounding this release. Probably more so than anything since Infinity Train, honestly. There's an upcoming show with Gendy Tarkovsky, the creator of Dexter's Lab, Samurai Jax, and Bionic Titan. That's supposed to come out too. We've got the Adventure Time spinoff and Clone High coming to HBO Max, which might also air on the channel occasionally. And then we've got... Oh god damn it. Make that their 7,000th and first program. Regardless, call me a sucker, but I do believe in their projections of a better lineup. They've got a new president who led Adult Swim to a very successful period, who just had a great interview recently. The upcoming lineup, well, it still has some room to improve, it looks fun and it looks promising. Also, I just really think a ton of people my age, young adults, college students, really want to check back in with the channel we grew up loving. Hopefully that push alone is enough to incite a better outcome for the channel, because as of right now, it just doesn't look good from an outsider perspective. One thing I've always just thought more entertainment studios and networks should take on is the public presentation approach. Every few months, you announce a video that has hints or announcements for upcoming projects. A 10 to 15 minute video presentation. This could range from new shows, new episodes, merchandise. It can even be used to promote the anti-bullying campaigns the network has. Just by giving the public, as well as more important people to these networks like advertisers and investors, a global lens into your upcoming work is incredibly beneficial. Call it the CN breakdown or something. Instead of random drops through social media, give us a more fun, easy to watch event where everyone is tuned in at the same time. That hooks us into the ecosystem of the network and gets us even more excited for news surrounding the channel to drop. That's exactly what happened to a ton of people with Nintendo. I wasn't even a big fan of them before watching their Nintendo Directs where they gave us surprise trailers and news surrounding their products. 
It creates a fun, exciting atmosphere around the company, and it's nothing but beneficial. Also, I just think they need to start using the HBO Max platform to their advantage. Create more exciting long-term shows for the channel and for the platform, they'll be in a better spot. I just really hope they soon adapt to the broadcasting expectations of now before they get left behind. Because like so many of you, I certainly don't want to see Cartoon Network shut down. It gives off that same feeling of your favorite childhood store closing down, your favorite band breaking up. It's not a great sensation. And beyond that, as an analyst and someone with a lasting interest in animation, I see incredible potential for the network to get out of the current spot they're in. And I'm sure many of you do as well. And if you are one of those people, please let me know if you have any other ideas you'd like to see the network take on. I respond to most if not all the comments shortly after the video is released since I love discussion, but if you comment like two months later after the vid is posted with a comment on me misusing a word or something, I, I can't promise I'll give you a reply then, I I'm sorry. But yeah, please let me know whatever you'd like to see from the network. Give them ideas. Honestly, they're privileged to have our insight and viewpoints and perspectives publicly rather than you know decades before where they couldn't have access to them. Having them on a public forum like this can incite change, and they're always saying they're listening, so voice your opinions in the comments. I'd love to see them, and hopefully they would too. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is my first time talking about anything outside of Total Drama and Object Shows, so it's a new step for me, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. And with that, thank you so much. See you later.